Father God, I want to thank you right now, Lord, for the opportunity to be here before your people, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for, call, uh, for counting me worthy to be able to stand here and speak to your people. And I just thank you right now, Lord. Lord, take me out. Touch my lips as you did Jeremiah. Touch them, Lord, that every word that is spoken is your word, not me. I'm not here, Lord. It's your word that's going to go forward. And we thank you right now, Lord. Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Oh, I want to thank this pastor of yours and first lady for having me out. You know, I'm going to tell you, this message that I'm about to bring today comes with a, a testimony. As I was preparing this, the message is concerning today's events. And as I was doing some research, because I'm talking about the church, the rapture of the church, many don't realize just how close we are. And I'm going to talk about today's events to encourage those that don't understand who have not been looking to be able to say, oh, I hear about, I heard about this on the news. So that, my, I'm hoping that would draw you an interest to look in this word and see what God has been trying to tell us. What happened is, on Thursday, most of this information I'm going to give you is dated within the last week prophetic information. In the word information, I'm going to speak from the Bible and I'm going to give you today's events so that you'll be able to say, wow, then I better get right. The Bible says in Matthew 24, he said, and this gospel must be preached. This gospel. The reason why is because we play a part of this gospel. All the other ones are for our education, for to teach us and to guide us and to do all the things that it's supposed to do. But this gospel is a gospel that we are living today. We are writing the pages. If somebody gets left behind, they're going to use our testimonies. They're going to use the ones that they can see. They're going to sit up there and say, Pastor Nolan said it. They're going to use each and every one of us. We play a part. Like I said, as I was writing this, as I was preparing this, a heavy sleep came over. And it wasn't a normal. It was one of those, I know you, everybody has the experience of kind of sleep that you know where you're just completely out of, you know? And during that time, I was being taught. And then, all of a sudden, I felt these hands around my neck, choking me. And I, fought through and raised up and I rebuked it because I knew what it was. I grabbed my oil and I went running around the house <laughs> anointing everything. Get this demon up out of here. My, uh, my son and my grandson had come in from work and they looked at me and I had a look they, they looking at me like because I had a look on my face because this was serious. There's a demon in this house. And we got to get it out. So after I did that, I came back and I sat down and I sat on the end of my bed and the Lord put in my spirit. The devil don't want this message to get out. You know, it also made me think about how because I'm a fighter, shoot from the hidden ministry tells you right now, that's what I am. I, I fight. 
uh, 1 John 3 and 8. It's the scripture that goes along with it. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The Lord gave me this ministry months right after, just a few months after I got saved. The Lord told me, I want you to start a ministry. He told me, he said, I don't want you to have no candy pans ministry. I don't want you to water, water it down. I don't want you to sugarcoat it. I want you to shoot from the hip, take no prisoners. A whole inch of life. So I sat there in my driveway trying to figure out what to call it. And I said, Lord, you did say shoot from the hip. So that's what I, I called it. Then he told me one other thing. He said, to be in this ministry, you're going to have to have the nerves of a gunfighter. If you know, if you watch enough westerns, you know what a gunfighter does. He walks right down the middle of the street. He tells them all to come out. I'm ready to slap leather with whoever is ready to slap leather with me. And he does not fear. Because if he feared, he couldn't be a gunfighter. He wouldn't be a, a successful gunfighter if he would. But he does not fear. The Lord told me, he said, you're going to have to have that kind of nerve because there's going to be a time you're going to have to stand toe to toe, look eye to eye at that devil. You're going to have to know that you have the victory. Well, the Lord called me, and there's a scripture that I, I, I sent on first. It's called, it's in 1 John 15, I mean, not 1 John, but 1 Corinthians 15, 9, and 10. It says, for I am the least of the apostles. I'm not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. But it's by the grace of God I am what I am. That's right. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Also with that is first, I mean Galatians, the first chapter. 11 and 12, it says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I, ne I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm the least of the apostles. I wonder sometimes why the Lord would call such a man as me. Well, today, I'm about to give you some scriptures. Now, if you want to follow along, you can just go to Matthew 24. I'm going to read some other scriptures in the beginning, whatever. But we're going to go on into Matthew 24 quite a bit. And like I said, I want, I want to break this down so that you can truly understand the day and the time we are living in. The reason why it's so important is the Lord told me to go out and prepare the church. Yesterday I, I heard the pastor say that we are the church. And that's what the Lord said. Prepare the church. In other words, prepare the people. See, a lot of us are in church and are not ready. We're going willy-nilly, but I'm going to tell you something. One of the things that the Lord told me is to preach holiness. So I, I questioned the Lord. I said, Lord, now, holiness? But in times, you give me in times also. Eschatology. He gave me several other things. I, I studied in uh, demonology, eschatology. I said, but you said, preach holiness. He told me to take holiness into the prison. And everywhere I go. And now, he explained to me, to live by this end time doctrine is living holy. Because you're not going to make it out of here. You're going to miss the trumpet call if you are not living holy. We've got to live a certain way. And this is no time to fit, try to figure it out. It's time to just say, Lord, I give up. Lord, please. Because the, the, the things that I'm going to tell you about right now are things that are happening now. But believe me, if you miss the if you miss that call, what is going to come is going to be a whole lot worse. Second Timothy 3 and 1 says, and know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now we are, if we are not in perilous times, I don't know. 
In 2 Peter 1, 19 to 21, it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as a, unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Prophecy. To understand prophecy is like a light shining in dark place. See, what I hope to do today is a light come on in every one of them. I know that your pastor is up on this, but there might be somebody sitting up in here that's still lacking. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart, knowing first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. It's not for, it's not meant for just a few of us to hold on to. It's for us to spread this. We got to tell them, not everybody knows the prophecy. But a prophecy came unto, came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I did just up and decide I was going to study in times. The Lord put it on my heart back in 1997. And I, I didn't know what to do, but I had an idea. And so I went out and I started trying to find everything I could about end time events. And I, I got the uh, help of curators at libraries and researchers in different places like the City of Hope and everywhere. And they gave me a whole lot of information. And while I was at it, the guy who actually invented the chip that they are trying, that they are going to input now, and you know they passed a law in March the 26th of 2013, that everybody who has the Affordable Care Act must have the chip. Page 1004. Okay? The man who made that chip back in 1997 sent me documents about it. He said, because I work for the people, I cannot get this word out, but I heard that you are trying to tell somebody, please, Tell them what this chip can do. This was in 97. The chip that he's talking about is the size of a point of a needle. They've been telling you for years, oh, it's about the size of a grain of rice. That was old, long time ago. The actual chip in 1997 was the size of a point of a needle. As a matter of fact, in 1996, Clinton okay to implant chips in all newborn babies, soldiers, inmates, people in like Congress and all them, or uh, stuff like that, to implant chips, right? Okay, this chip in 1998, they raided 400 body piercing and tattoo shops around the country because they was implanting the chip when you go to get a tattoo or a body piercing. Right. You don't know because they can put it on the point of a needle and as they put the tattoo on you, you can be having a chip. They raided 400 shops, but how many didn't? And they must have been sworn to secrecy because they have never ever told how they get this. They still don't know, but they did. And it was implanting the very chip. Now, you say, what can this chip do? Well, when he sent me the thing, he says, just as you can program your computer, I can program anybody who got that chip. It kind of explains why some of, our, uh, some of our family members all of a sudden start acting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get, I'm going to get back to the message now. Daniel 5 and 5 says, In the same hour came four fingers 
of a man's hand and wrote against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that broke. Verse 7 says, The king cried out, cried aloud to bring into the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed in scarlet and have a gold and a chain of gold about his neck and, sh and shall be the third ruler of the kingdom. Verse 8. Then it came, and then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. It was written by divine revelation, number one. That means not everybody can, can understand it. You know yourself, before you came to Christ, you, I know me, I used to open up this Bible and look like ants crawling around on the page. Or Chinese or something. I can read, I can read it, but I really never ever got a complete understanding. It is because I wasn't Holy Spirit filled. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says, For he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You see, not everybody is put here to give you this prophecy. Because I wonder, if this is so important, why is it that only a few actually are bringing this message out? And I was upset. I was, I was like, Lord, come on now. You know, why isn't, whenever I go to church, why isn't everybody speaking this? Lord, let me know. He brought me to that scripture. He said, because I didn't give it to everybody. So, don't get mad. <laughs> Daniel 5 again. Verse 11, it says, There is a man in thy kingdom, and who is the spirit of the holy gods? Verse 17 says, And then Daniel answered and said before the king, I will yet read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. That's what I am called to do. I am called to interpret what the handwriting on the wall is. I'm here. That's what. Matthew 24 and 6 says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Have you noticed all the stuff that's going on in wars and rumors of wars? Nations against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. Our president tried to say that uh, Christians don't have to, uh, shouldn't worry as much because Muslims have, killing, have killed more than Christians. Well, that's, they've been doing that for a long time. You've got Sunni and Shiite been fighting each other for centuries. That don't still don't make no, that don't give no, <laughs> that don't comfort me. Because I'm a Christian. Because all they're doing is what God says. You know, isn't God's word so good? This is the reason why end time prophecy is so important. It's because every word in this book will come to pass. I was, at the age of 14, I got introduced into the nation of Islam. Because my bringing up before then, as they was trying to give me these doctors and stuff, there was something inside me just said, this is not right. But I stuck with it because they, I was making money. They came to me because I wasn't always a saved man. And I was doing some things at a young age. And the nation of Islam, they came to me and said, look here, we know what you're doing. And we're going to offer you protection. And all the merchandise, I, I, was, I was out there. 
And he told me that all, everything I could get my hands on, bring it to them. And they offered me protection. And then at the same time, I began to become a member of Mods Number 27 down on Broadway. And that went on until I was about 31. You know? Now, but I never could really sink into their doctrine because I had been taught different as a child. Raise up a child in the way they should go. That is very important because if it wasn't for that doctrine that, that I was taught as a child by my grandmother and by, I, I went to Catholic school until they kicked me out in seventh grade. <laughs> but I was there and so but those priests that did, I, we studied the Bible all day long, every day. We started out on our morning in prayer, we ended in prayer. And we studied the Bible, we studied it as a history book, a geography book. The Bible was our book. That's what we studied in school. So, like I said, I went along with them because, I, yeah, I could use this protection. You know, and we were making money. <laughs> And that's what I was all about, because what the devil do? He come and tell you, he said, look here, you know, you can do this, and you can really get over. And what do we do? Because all of us been down that road, we listen to him. Thank God, like I say, for the teaching that my mother gave. Wars and rumors of wars. The things that are going on today. Look at the news. Read your word. He's telling us right there. Let me tell you, let me go, I'm going to go back into the Old Testament a little bit right now again. I'm going to go to Lamentations 4 and 6, and it says, For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. That was overthrown as in a moment, and no hand stayed upon her. The sin of Sodom, I, I got a feeling that our nation is right there. Amen. If God don't punish us, then what's he going to do about Sodom? What is he going to do about all of those that have already been punished? Oh, I preached into the uh, prison. What if? Well, I don't want to say, oh, I was born this way and everything like that. And I said, what if? What if you wrong? You know, and I preach it. And I meant it. What if you wrong? All these little things that you done come up with, our nation has turned their back on God. And just like he said, for the punishment of the iniquity, he said, if the punishment is of the sin of Sodom, which he overthrown in a moment. Do you know that when God did away with Sodom and the surrounding cities. You know they still wanted it if they found it. I mean, he did away with it. They found some burnt pottery in it. <laughs> but he, he took Sodom, which was supposed to be a very great city, and Gomorrah and the surrounding city. He took them out. I don't want to be here when that happens. And it's going to happen. Because as I continue reading, you'll see. Do you know that Muslims have killed approximately 40 million Christians since this has been going on? 40 million Christians. Now, we here in the U.S. are going to have to pay the cost because we have killed 50 million babies in the past 50 years. We've killed more babies than the Muslims have killed Christians. Mm. We are living in the end days. There's no way you can say that. Zechariah 12 and 14, I mean, 14 and verse 12. And it says, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. And this shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. 
and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. That scripture was written in 520 B.C. But it is more real today than it ever been. Am I correct? Goes to show that this word is the true word of God. Whatever is written is going to come to pass. 500 years before Christ, he, this was written. Now, if you, when, when in those days could something come along so quick and melt the flesh off your body before your bones can hit the ground? <laughs> it was not until today. Today is the day. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 24 and 8 says, and these are the beginning of sorrows. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the clock is ticking. Uh, Can't you hear it? Yeah. Tick, tock, tick, tock. That clock is ticking. Yeah, Time is riding, riding down. Yeah. 24 and 21 says, and then shall be great tribulation such as was not seen since the beginning of the world to this time. And nor shall ever be. We are living in the most dangerous of times. Do you know that there are more suicides? There are mothers against daughters, fathers against sons, whole families being wiped out more than it's ever have been. More uncertainty. Do you know you can work all your life and still end up broke? I'm on skid row. And you don't know how many people that are down there say I was just one paycheck away. And it happened. People living. We can't afford to eat. Some people have to uh, negotiate whether to pay a bill or buy the medicine. And they don't care. They'll come and turn your lights off, your gas off. They don't care. If you don't have the money, that's it. 24, 37 to 41. But as in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. This is so important. Please, I want you, I want you to remember this all through while I'm here today. Until Noah entered into the ark. This is so important. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. I'm not going to go on with the rest of the stop right there with that scripture. He said, it wasn't until Noah entered the ark. What does that mean for us today? That the, the, the coming of the Son of Man be that this end time will be, that that trumpet call will sound before the destruction comes, meaning that it can come any time. Are you ready? Tick tock. The clock is winding down. The church will be raptured out of here before all of this stuff happens. We are being set up. The Lord said that we will know the season. Right now, you know what season we're in. I'm sweating like I don't know what. So it tells you right now, it must be summer. But so many of us do not realize that end time is a season. He gave us enough word and now he's sending out his, his men and women to tell you, look, we better be ready 
now. Now is the time to be ready. There's no time to be thinking about it. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 9 says, But of the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall sell, say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Let me tell you something. Do you realize just Thursday, once again, Carrie went to Jerusalem and told them to sign the peace accord? From what I'm reading, the church won't actually be here to see it. Do you realize how close we are to the rapture? I'm telling you right now just how close we are. There's only one thing that will hinder the rapture, and that's going to be a world war. Either one can happen, but let's go on with that scripture. It says, peace and safety and sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And there shall be, and, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. There it is about that darkness again. That the day shall not overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they are drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and the helmet, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. This is so important. For God has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He did not, uh, he's going to, just as in the days of Noah, just like I said, that before the flood came, when, be, when he entered into the ark, why? Because he took them out before the flood came. He's going to take the church, he's going to take all of us, out of here before all of this stuff happens. That's the reason why we got to be ready now. His word, I have proven, and I hopefully I'm still proving, that his word is true. And if he said that God has not appointed us to wrath, Second Thessalonians. 2, 3 to 5 says, But let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed in the son of perdition. Let me stop right there for a second. Become a falling away first. The devil is put in the minds of so many, especially our young people, that we don't have to be ready. It is not time. He has sidetracked us in so many ways on so many other things that we're not even paying attention to what's really going on in this world. And that's the reason why this, what I'm bringing to you right now, is updated news. I'm bringing, I haven't even got to the, uh, to the part that I picked out for, let's say, today. Because when I'm trying to give you an interest to see God's word. Because our young people have lost interest in God's word. Why? It's because they have parents who lost interest in God's word. 
I remember a day when a young kid was in church. Their parents said, "Made up. You join this program. You do this. You sing here." But nowadays, well, in fact, they don't want to do it. Well, whatever. That's right. That's right. And so many children are not participating in church, and they feel they don't care right. whether or not they come to church on Sunday. Matter of fact, they'd rather not. There'd be a great falling away right there in your own house. Yeah. Pastor's sons, that's right. How many times we've been in the prison and somebody said, I'm a pastor's son, I'm a missionary's daughter, and everything else. Uh huh. Yeah. But when they thought they was old enough, they said, I'm not going to church no more. Because mm -hmm. I went, I, I dealt with that by the same. And some of them can quote the Bible. And really, they don't know what they're talking about. That's right. Who oppose and exalt God sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Tick tock. I'm about to give you, now we're about to go into that Matthew 24. A lot now. Because I'm going to give you the 10 end time prophecy signs. The first one is a great increase of false messiahs. The reason why you can't negotiate with these Islamic terrorists or whatever you might want to call them is because they have a book. They actually have two books. They got the Quran and they got the Hadith. I have them, I read them, I marked them, and I know what I'm talking about. But the reason why you can't negotiate or talk to them is because they believe in this 12 Ema or Mahdi. So it's in their book, and they believe that Jesus is coming back. They call him Isaac. They, be, they believe he's going to come back and kill all of us Christians. That he has been converted to a Muslim. Now how can you negotiate with somebody like that? What we are doing wrong in this world is we are not spreading the gospel. Because the best way to stop Islam is with the gospel. But instead, what do they do? They take the gospel away from us. You can't bring a Bible to school, to work. They don't want you wearing a cross. And do you know that there are uh, 20, 23 states that are considering Sharia law? Do you know that there are cities such as San Antonio that if you have ever said anything against homosexuality, you will lose your job. And if you come into the city to do work in the city and they find out that you have, you cannot do business in the city of San Antonio. There's three or four other states of cities just like that. If you have ever said anything about homosexuality, you will lose your job. Mm -hmm. False messiahs. It's crazy. But it's so true. They believe in a false messiah. They get 12 imam. The bhakti. It's the reason why people like Adinijah and all them, they and all these terrorists, what is the first thing they say? Is to wipe Jerusalem off the map. Because they know when they do that, they will usher in this 12 imam. And that's what they're going to do. And it's in their Quran. Lie if you have to. And we have too many people relying on what we see on TV as gospel and not the gospel. The second sign 
a great increase in wars. Irrespective of our eschatology beliefs, it is undeniable that the traditions of the enemies of Israel will come against it in the end times. Those traditional enemies specified include the Arab Islamic people groups surrounding Israel today and have fought against it since back in the days of Ishmael, Esau, Medea, Moab, Ammon. Intermarrying lines became the mixed Arab people. They will come against Israel that the Lord will intervene as in Ezekiel 38 verse 23 says, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord and Israel shall, as in Ezekiel 39, 28, 29, know that I am the Lord their God, neither will I hide my face anymore from them. With a few additional details, the world could be standing in the threshold of the prophecy of Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, John, and many others. The United States on Thursday reiterated the need for a peace agreement between Israel and the Palestine authorities, 9-11. In May, they told Israel and they told the Palestinians, and do you know that right after that is when this war between uh, the Gaza Strip happened. But it wasn't until after Kerry made this statement he told Israel to sign the peace accord or else. Then he told the Palestinian army, he told all of Hamas and all of them, and Iran, if Israel doesn't sign it, I can't be responsible for what you do. Now what kind of statement is that? He gonna tell them to sign it, and if they don't, hey, you guys want to throw bombs at them? That's on you. We got nothing to do about it. We told them, sign it. Why isn't it that they don't sign it? Because that be the dividing Jerusalem. Right. Scripture says that once they divide Jerusalem, God going to come down and handle this. Right. But, Scripture says it's going to get divided because that's what is going to usher God back in the day in Armageddon. When the 200 million man army. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. The attack on Gaza was an attack on all of us and a warning that the threat of a new world war is growing by the day. On 9-11, as I was researching, number three on the prophecy list, Matthew 24, 7. Matthew 24, 7 is saying, for the nation shall, yeah, oh, nation shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kings, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. In one day, in one day, there was a 5.3 in Saban, Indonesia, 5.3 in northern uh, Marinas, 5.1 in Palmer Station, Antarctica, 5.1 in Eric Arica, Iceland, in one day. In the year 2000, we were having an average of 2,500 earthquakes a year. By 2009 and to the present day, we have a million earthquakes a year. A million earthquakes a year. Earthquakes in diverse places. Last year, was it last year? When they, there was an earthquake registered to be something like a 7.9 in the center of the earth in January of last year. 
in the center of the earth. And I told my wife then, I said, oh, that's going to work up. I told her, I said, that's going to come to the top. If it's down there, it's got to work its way up. It can't just, it ain't going to earth shake there and not shake somewhere else. Listen to this, because I know you know about this. Starting in February, sinkholes all over the world. In China, uh, a rice field just collapsed. In Georgia, a strip mall collapsed. Somewhere else in Ohio, a bridge collapsed. All fell in holes. Holes all over the world. I'm talking about earthquakes. It says that there would be earthquakes. What else did it say? Pestilence. And, you know, a different thing. Okay, let me tell you a little bit more about this. Eruption, concern, strikes, icy. Volcanic Eruptions after the earthquake in Iceland. Toxic gas after an eruption. Urbana volcanoes in Peru erupt. Someplace in Kazakhstan, Russia, another volcano erupts. Tropical depression, 15 is forecast to strike the Philippines as a typhoon. This was just in one day about earthquakes and things. In one day. The same day. In Matthew, uh, we already read Matthew 7, but it talks about the families. But let's go to, that's the fourth one. The fifth one is a great increase in pestilence. Una identified respiratory viruses like that hit kids across the country. Do you know how many kids have been submitted into the hospitals lately here in the United States? They don't know why, but babies are going to the hospital, can't breathe. This is what I'm telling you, I picked up in one day. Obama's U.S. military to provide equipment resources to the battle to battle Ebola epidemic in Africa. Ebola like to spread internationally. They claim it's a modest risk in the United States and the U.K. Ebola is devouring everything in its path. Could it lead? It could lead to Libya's collapse, Liberia's collapse. Viral Virologists fight against Ebola in Sierra Leone and Liberia is lost. Ebola cases rapidly rise rapidly in the Congo. Zaire. This is part of just one day's news. Scientists reset stem cell study of human development. They're going to restart that. They want to try to clone. In this number six, a great increase of fearful events. You can look at, I'm going I'm to kind of go through this, but uh, Luke 21, uh, verses 11. Oh, that head in here. Just a moment. Oh, yeah. 21, verses 11. And Revelation, uh, well, it says, a great earthquake shall be in diverse places and famines, pestilence, and fearful sights. And great sights shall there be in the heavens. Verse 25 says, and there shall be a sign in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. The seventh sign is great signs from the sky. Just recently, not too long ago, they still haven't found that jet. Now, you see how the world was upset about, what is it, 235 people, something like that? 
disappear? How do you think the world going to act when the rapture comes? There will be an economic collapse. If it doesn't happen before then, it will definitely happen when the rapture occurs. When God takes his people out of here. I tell the inmates all the time, I say, you need to be saved. Because the worst thing in the world will happen is if you miss that altar call, I mean that trumpet call, you get left behind. You're going to be on lockdown <laughs> throughout eternity. <laughs> nothing going to move <laughs> and nothing going nowhere so they figure out where all these inmates went. <laughs> They're going to swim it down with a conspiracy because some of them deputies uh, and them officers are saved too. And they're going to have a whole bunch of inmates and a whole bunch of uh, the officials and everybody going to disappear and they're going to, first thing they're going to say is a conspiracy, something happened. And those inmates that get left behind are going to be on lockdown. But it won't be nothing compared to what's going to happen right here. When God's people are taken out of here, the devil is going to run wild. It is a terrible persecution of the saints. Matthew 24, 9 to 12. And they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then they shall, shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. Because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. They're going to be turned on. Snitches. <laughs> That's right. That's what we call them in the street. We call them snitches. They're going to be turning on you. You're going to have people that come to church every Sunday but just don't have what it takes. That's the reason why I'm bringing you this today, to wake you up. If you do not have what you claim you have or what you want to have and just don't know how to get it, this should get, encourage you to know that you better get it now. Yes. Humans will be, this is, this, the persecution of saints, let me show you something. Humans will have evolved into a different species by 2050. By 2050, a completely new type of human will evolve as a result of a radical new technology, behavior, and natural selection. This is according to Kandel Lant, a researcher at the Global Brain Institute who claims mankind is undergoing a major evolutionary transition. Isn't that something? I remember hearing just a few years ago, maybe, maybe 10 years ago, they said the reason why this tide is turning towards homosexuality is because man is evolving. Okay, the ninth sign the ten, that we are in the end times, the fall and attack of the whole world will focus on Jerusalem. This is Ezekiel 39, 11 to 13. Why is the focus on Jerusalem so much? The reason why is God himself calls Jerusalem his holy city at least 11 times. And is this city on earth is designated. God declares it is the city called by my name. It's the only reason why they want Jerusalem. It's for no other reason. Jerusalem. 
Israel is such a small part of the world. Why do they want it? It's the only reason why. Why do they focus on Jerusalem so much? Why is it they want to divide the city? Why is it that they want to give it to the, uh, to the Arabs who don't even know Christ? They don't even know. It's because it is the holy city. And we're dealing with an adversary that's none other than the Antichrist. The tenth is the return of Jesus Christ. First, we're taking the church up by the rapture to be with him to protect the church from the horrible seven year tribulation. Tick tock. The last and final sign that we are living in the end time. Is God is going to take us out of here. Yeah. Scripture. I didn't make this up. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorrupt, and we shall be changed. Matthew 26, 36, 42, and 44 says, But in that day and hour no man know." Not, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Which therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Therefore, ye also be, be also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. In the book of Ezekiel, starting at verse. 30, I mean, chapter 37 to 39 says, In the near future, a dark cloud shall be sent upon the tiny nation of Israel. This cloud is a massive army formed from the military alliance led by Russia and its allies, including Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Sudan, Libya, Australia, Germany, parts of Eastern Europe, Southern Europe, Turkey, and various other nations. This is called in the Bible as foretold thousands of years ago by the prophet Ezekiel. This is the infamous Magog invasion. And that's just some of them. Now, he said this, but it's going to happen. We can't stop it. Why? It's because in there, Scripture in Ezekiel it says, and it will happen. The alliance are falling into place. Soon God will put a hook in the mouth and draw them into battle. He wants this to happen so that the world will know who is God. Dog and make dog. Let me tell you something. Scriptures, we may not understand why the scriptures and why things are happening in the news today. But I want you to see something. Gog and Magog in the Bible, in Ezekiel, this is Russia and get this, the Ukraine. As of 1996 or 94, Ukraine separated itself all alliances with Russia. They gave up all their missiles and everything for the protection of the United States. Now, isn't it something that here all of a sudden Russia is reclaiming the Ukraine? I didn't think about it until I read the scripture and got the definition for Gog and Magog and see that Russia, the Ukraine, Kazakhstan. In those scriptures, they talk about Misha, Tubal, and Rosh. Iran, Turkey, Iraq, Ethiopia, Sudan, Libya, Gomer, Turkey, uh, Sheba and Deban, the Arab people, Tarshish, southern Spain, Gibraltar, the whole world against tiny Israel, including the United States and China. You say, what? The United States? I'm going to tell you something. I know enough about God to know that He's going to do it. 
He's going to restore. He brought back a country that had been disbanded, destroyed after 2,500 years. He brought them back, just as he said, I will gather them from all parts of the earth, and I will bring them back. And not only did he bring them back, he brought back a dead language. Who can do that but God? But he said it was going to happen. Why did I say the United States? It's because the way our government is going right now, it would be foolish for Iran or whoever it is is going to start this war or whatever to wait till after the presidential elections. That means they're going to do it between now and sometime in 2015. It's going to happen. They have to do it while we have this president in office because they know that with this one in office, they will not be there for Israel. God does not need no help. We, it's not going to be like the Second World War. This Third World War is going to be the worst of all. But there's no one going to be able to say, the United States came in and they wiped out the Germans. Who they did? What they did to the Japanese? No. The United States is not going to be there to help nobody. They're going to say, God did it. He said, I'm going to do it so that you're going to know who I am. Amen. Mm. I want to go into something else real quick. I want to talk about the caliphate real quick. The caliphate to establish Islam all over the world. Presently, Iran, Iraq, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Cyprus, Pakistan, and then Turkey. Muslim leaders take and call all Muslim nations together. That's what ISIS just did just the other day. The other day, they called for all Islamic nations to come together under one banner. On July the 2nd, just last month, or the month before, it says, a call for all Muslim nations to unite. The United States declared on that same day, the United States declared the United States an Islamic nation. Do you guys listen to the news? I don't know what news you're listening to. Because if you don't, if you don't, if I'm telling you something you don't know, I'm here to inform you. It's time for you to get the wax out your ears and pay attention. We are living in the end of days. I'm here to get you to uh, to wake up, to hear what's going on, to say, Lord, I want to answer that call. Lord, please, I haven't been listening. I hear you calling me, Lord, but I need, I need your help. The Lord is asking a simple question. He's asking, would you accept me? All he wants you to do is just say yes. Just say yes. I know that there's many of you that don't quite know. I'm going to tell you something. If you're sitting here and you never, ever felt the Holy Spirit, you're missing the greatest love that you can ever have. And if you have not felt that Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit doesn't rest, boom, and abide in you. You're not going to make the trumpet call. Simple as that. Because God is not taking you 99%. He wants those that are willing to say, yes, Lord. I want to get out of here. I don't want to be left behind. I try to bring you information so to make you want to open that Bible up and read it. Information that will make you say, look, i got to find out more. Because my soul, my eternity, relies on it. Lord, I say yes, Lord. Come into my heart. If you are not saved, if you're sitting up in here right now and you are not saved, it's because you do not want to be saved. You have no excuse. You don't have to prepare yourself. 
I didn't prepare myself. I came to them just as I was. A sucked up dope thing. And Jesus loved me so much, I said yes in the dope house. I said yes, Lord. And his spirit filled me. I got saved in the dope house. What's your problem? I did not say, Lord, clean me up. And, uh, uh, no, let me get clean first. Uh, let me you know, shake these habits. And when he did, he did some things to me that I never could understand. And, and sometimes I wonder, why, Lord, would you save a wretch like me? I don't see anybody as bad as I was in here. Because believe me, I was tore up, sucked up, stank. My wife didn't even want to have nothing to do with me. My children didn't want to have nothing to do with me. But God touched me one day when I said, yes. And he restored me. He took a nothing, a nobody, an uneducated person, and he put this in me. What can he do with you, young people, old people? Because I wasn't young when I came to Christ. I'll be celebrating 20 years saved December 18. It's the last time I hit the pipe or anything. And God put his spirit in me. Something that I will never let go. And if you've never had the spirit in you, you missing something that you do not want to miss. And without it, you're going to miss everything. And you're going to have to go through and you do not want to go through. Because if you think times is hard now, miss that call. Miss that call. 